What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Couple Things. With Sean and Andrew. A podcast all about couples. And the things they go through. Today we're talking about a couple with their kids traveling all the way around the world and back again. That's Jess and Garrett. Can I be honest? Uh, they're one of my favorite people to follow. I know. They're so fun. Every video they have is really well done. And it's also incredibly based. They're always in Africa or some magical place. Tonga, Turkey, Maldives. They've gone to Zanzibar. They've gone to like a hundred countries. Yeah. Been traveling. They went traveling full time for three years. Yep. With their babies. With their three kids. Yep. And they've documented it all, shared it all on social media and YouTube specifically. If you haven't heard of the Bucketless family, go check them out. They do an awesome job. We actually got a chance to work out with Garrett and Jess. Four years ago. Four years ago in, uh, yeah. Park City, Utah. That's right. It was before babies for us. We were talking about their travels. We were talking about how we were wanting to have kids and we were starting to try. And four years later, we're finally getting to talk to them again. We've had countless trips planned with them. And we're supposed to go to Hawaii this summer. Yes. So TBD. We'll let you know. We'd love to meet up with them in person. And, and at the end of this interview, they tell us the two countries we need to go see this summer. So I'm going to book it. Also, do you remember when we met them in person? Him saying that he was a huge fan of you. He and had my picture <laughs> in his locker. Yeah. What? We did not talk about that. Garrett. We probably should. <laughs> I forgot about that. Uh, funny stuff. Uh, Honestly, Garrett's background, though, is really impressive. So he created software that, like, scans barcode. Yep. And sold it to Snapchat. Worked for Snapchat for a year. Then used whatever money he got from selling that to spark their travels around mm -hmm. the world. Um, and now they have a company called Bucket List Studios where they're developing animation and different types of content that uh, is all in this family lifestyle space that, you know, we think is so important. So anyway, if you want to find out more about Jess and Garrett and the Bucket List family, we'll link their information down below. Thank you to Jess and Garrett for joining us. And we hope you enjoy this show. Let's roll into it. Well, Jess and Garrett, it's been a couple of years since we hung out in person, but thank you for joining us on the show today. How are you two? We're great. Yeah, we're doing well. We're just, we just, just want to another... hang out with you guys. That's all. So if we have to do it on a podcast, then fine. Well, well I will try to make it so we end up in Hawaii okay. this summer. Working very hard. Um, What's it like to be way cooler than most other families, including us, in the world? What is it like? We can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys wait. i have so many questions now as parents so when we ran into you guys we didn't have either of our babies no you and guys were, you were working on it i think we were working I on it had to work fast and already two two littles over there Jeez, popped them out quick That's well popped them out quick but i have such a different appreciation for what you guys actually do now now being parents <laughs> I have a million questions. How do you fly with your children? How do you sleep in a hotel room or not in a hotel room? How do you camp with them? What? We just flew from San Diego back to Nashville, and our kids almost had a meltdown. I need all of the secrets. They're about to school us up. I mean, here's the thing is we just Real quick, I'm going to tell you it. right now. Jess is about to dumb it down and be like, oh, we're not that... No, Jessica really is like the pro and full of all the of the tips. Kid don't sad don't be satisfied with her like half answers. You need to get the like real expert. Tips. <laughs> okay, we'll do it. We'll do it. Here's the thing. Kids are kids no matter where they are, right? We just have meltdowns on airplanes and meltdowns meltdowns in the Serengeti and meltdowns on boats. You know what I mean? Like we still have them. I think for us, our kids are so, you know, as parents, you're kind of taught and you read all these books about like consistency and like getting your kids in a routine but our kids routine is non-routine so you know we still we try to have our little routine within our inconsistent lifestyle right so we still have a nap time and we still have you know certain times of the day and bedtime routines but it's still just kind of within this like you know we're in a different hotel room every night or something like that um and, and you wow. know like you guys and most parents have realized like oh if you're gonna miss a nap time you're gonna pay for it right but the kids kind of learn you nap on the go and you nap in the stroller and you nap on the plane and you just have to give them the benefit of the doubt and know that they're struggling because they're tired or they're hungry. Is there, are there any like, I don't want to say traumatic, but traumatic like meltdown stories that you've tried to just like push out of your head? I'll say our kids, I'm trying to think of like meltdown stories. 
I don't know if you'd consider this a meltdown. It's a different kind of messy story. But we were on one flight from China. Was it China all the way to LA? Where did we fly into? It was into? a long, it was an Asian, it was like a It was one of those like Pacific flight. 12 hour flights. And our middle child. Uh, Who is potty trained? He was, was potty, potty trained, trained, but he, I was sleeping on like our little like three row seat in the middle of the plane. And he was just laying right on top of me. And the middle of the night, I wake up to him just peeing, peeing on me. And I was, <sighs> oh my gosh, that what a way to wake up, right? Because you always say you're like, <laughs> wow. pack an extra set of clothing for kids, right? That's a given. But for dad well, to just did. be wow. like, he covered. Anyways, yeah, so I didn't have extra clothes, but he did. So I wake up, we get cleaned up, we change his clothes, we go back to sleep because there's still like six hours left in this flight. I don't know what the kid drank. <laughs> But like three hours later, he peed on me again. <laughs> I'm telling you, he hadn't like wet the pants for like a year before that. And then on this flight, he decided to do it twice, both times on me. It was, yeah, that, that was quite the traumatic experience. But for that all of us. day, I feel like that wasn't like a win. Like that wasn't like a marital win because you were so mad at me. Like you just had to take your anger out at somebody. Do you guys ever like just get so mad at like the kids? And you're not going to take your anger out on the kids, but you like just take it out on each other. I've actually never done that, Jess. Have you, Garrett? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only when I'm pee covered. <laughs> yeah. I did feel bad, so I kind of was just like, fine, bring the anger to me. So by the time we got off that flight, not only was I covered in pee, but our child was now naked because he had gone through two cycles of clothes. Oh, no. Dang. I will say we've gotten off probably a handful of flights with our youngest in just a diaper or oh, just yeah. a diaper and a shirt. Oh, yeah. Or sometimes just like a shirt wrapped around him or like a blanket wrapped around him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why do you guys do what you do? Mm. That's a great question. <laughs> I want to hear your answer. <laughs> if we don't have an answer for you. Just like, oh, my gosh. Why do we do what Why we do? Why do we do <laughs> I mean, years ago, it all started as kind of a... A unique situation in our lives where we, uh, Garrett had sold a company and we weren't ready to settle down. We weren't ready to build a house. We didn't know where to be. So we were kind of putting off all grown up decisions and we're like, let's see what we can learn from the world and then take that into like our future family, you know, with a, with a plan for four months of travel. And that four months then turned into three years of full-time travel. And here we are. I think that's what it was. Seven though. years later. And like oh, almost a hundred countries later. You know? I think that's it though, is when we set out, we just wanted to like learn more from the world and we became very addicted to how much we were learning. We were taking mm -hmm. so much from each of these cultures that we were visiting that, yeah, we, we just didn't want to stop learning, especially together as a family. The fact that we were able to do it together as a family unit, I mean, those were just priceless memories for us. And, uh, we, we didn't want it to stop. Well, and I think me personally, I'm like just the quintessential like all American girl next door, right? Like I, I had a dad with a, you know, a nine to five. I kind of just always pictured that for me and, you know, having a husband who, I don't know, probably got a college degree somewhere and, and just like worked that nine to five. That's always what I pictured. And then I married this guy who is just the king of extreme and whatever he does, he goes like 10,000% always. And my guy. So my like <laughs> moderate lifestyle and personality <coughs> is just queen of moderation, king, king of extreme. That's what I like to say. And um, somehow just over the years, I, I, after about four months of travel, I was like, actually, I'm enjoying this. Like much to my surprise, like I like living out of a suitcase. I like living a minimalistic lifestyle. Uh, I love sharing these experiences with my family. So I feel like never in a million years did I ever set up, say, I want to travel the world. I was like, yeah, maybe I'd like to go to Italy someday. That was like probably me growing up. Mm. But now I'm like, I love it. I love it. So for someone who's so normal, I feel like to be doing something so outside of the box, it's been a huge lifestyle switch for me specifically. One of my favorite things about Jessica is that she was not cut out for this lifestyle, especially the other half of it, the, the social media half of it, the Instagram, the YouTube, all of that, like, Jess and her personality type like had zero desire for any sort of fame and success in that realm and uh just so many things about her personality were not cut out for it and so it's been Still really fun it. <laughs> it's been really fun to Same. see how she's like handled with that uh, honestly I think that's something that you guys do really really well that 
you can tell that your life on camera and your life off camera is very similar. And it was the same thing. Like I, Jess and I would joke that when our YouTube becomes big enough, it's going to, and Jessica's now like famous mom world traveler, it's going to change her and she's going to start like getting more done up and showered and makeup and dressing more fancy. Nope. None of that. And, uh, and, but, you know, props to Jess for always just staying true to who she's always been. How do you guys found that, like, find that balance within your family of how much do you film? How much do you share? How much of it is just your passion? How much do you film your children? Like, where are your boundaries when it comes to sharing your life with everyone else? And, and really, maybe to preface that, I'd be curious, like, what sparked the desire to want to document and share all that? Uh, I'll, I'll start off and just say that Garrett is a huge journal keeper, always has from the day we started dating, oh my God. you know, back in 2009, he wrote in his, he had a little Blackberry and he wrote in it every single day and took really crappy pictures with his Blackberry phone. <laughs> and then the day we got engaged, he gave me a book. We still have it of like literally daily journal entries of our mm. dates and what I was wearing and where we went and what I said, like the sweetest, most romantic person is this guy and that was like pre social media. And so when social media came around and we had Dorothy, we had our first daughter, it was such a natural thing for him to be like, I'm going to take her picture every single day. He created an Instagram for our daughter, Dorothy and posted a photo every single day. First and foremost, always just for us as a journal. And then when we sought out on these travels, it was always going to be just a journal and kudos to him because he hasn't, you know, really given into a lot of the, You know, especially when it comes to like YouTube, you know, we don't follow the YouTube recipe at all. Uh, Mm -hmm. Garrett uses copywritten music. We have 20 minute videos, like everything that you're supposed to do with YouTube, we do not do. But it's because we care so much about our family journal. Um, And he's done a really good job at at that. Thank you, baby. Yeah. (laughs) You do a great job at that. Both of you do a great job at that. I I, I do think... It's been tough because when we started, like Jessica said, it was just going to be a family journal. And then the whole like influencer scene and ecosystem like became something. And so uh, we've, we've tried our best, even though in a way, like we kind of helped create the beast and the monster that is like influencer world. Uh, we've tried to be a good example to people out there and being like, hey, First and foremost, this should be like live your life to the fullest and document it in a way that you want to remember it. Don't document it for like likes and subscribers and any other outside peer pressure. And uh, yeah, so we've tried to stay true to that and just be good examples of that to everyone else. And I'll also add that Garrett, and I'd be curious to hear how it is in your relationship. He is amazing at holding a camera with like whales passing him by and the kids on his arm and then living in the moment. Whereas I like rarely hold the camera, you know, for me, I'm just cameras all over the place. It doesn't work, but he has got a very incredible skill of like living in a moment and being able to capture it really, really well. I feel like that's different. That's the same with us. Like Andrew can film anything and live in it. If I'm filming it, I'm not experiencing it. Yeah. And (laughs) there'll be times where I'll go off on a trip and he's like, make sure you film it. This would be really cute to see. And I'm like, I don't think I am capable. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. To be honest with you, it's like I grew my dad filmed everything. He brought a camcorder around with him, like the shoulder mounted (laughs) one. And that's what I grew up. Like that's how we experienced things was always, he was filming something. And so to me, it's never been like a family memories like captured. Yeah. We did have a house fire, so all the tapes got lit on fire. I know. But anyway, <laughs> I know. But thank goodness for YouTube. So that's why yeah. that's why it's like so precious for us to be able to put this in the cloud and like yeah. it actually is crazy. I don't know if you guys have ever done this, but like we'll make like um compilation videos kind of where we'll say, Hey, you posted that one Sean posted that one the other day of like kind of like motherhood. It was so beautiful. Yeah, that was a good one. So yeah, that was good. But now we can actually include our audience in that. And like, I'll tweet out like, hey, can can anyone find this video of Sean doing like whatever the balance beam in 2007? And someone will like, boom, immediate. It is crazy. So now it's we have librarians working with us on the Internet. It's kind of cool. Anyway, I love that. (laughs) That's my story. It's it's funny how many different things like you and I have in common. Uh, We grew up also like 
making family home videos and going on trips and doing music videos and everything. And then crazy scenario, we lost it all. <laughs> all of it yeah uh, mine wasn't a house fire mine was the evil stepmom <laughs> oh no no Wait, crazy i what i am curious though to more of you two like the the guys sometimes i get really caught up in this idea of oh i need to document everything and kind of going to adjust and saying it's really hard for me to live in the moment and document it do you guys ever feel like sometimes you spend too much time? Do you ever like find that confliction of I'm spending too much time trying to document everything that it could go away and I won't have those like memories? Or I don't know if I feel that way. I'm just no. That's like, why when I you think lose those thing. like that. Yeah, I get exactly what you're talking about, and that's why I think it's a tricky thing because I do think it comes down to a personality type. And in a weird way, it really is like a skill to be able to enjoy the moment, embrace the moment while also capturing it. And not everyone can do that. Uh, at least for me, I've never had a time where I like regretted capturing a moment. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Uh, there's been a half full of times where I'm like, oh, shoot, I wish I would have had my camera out for that moment. And I didn't. And I just need to like be OK with it and like remember it in my own heart. But um, yeah, I've never really regretted having the camera out and like capturing a moment that was special. Um, I think the only times the camera does get in the way is as our channel has gotten bigger and we've been working with more brands. There's anytime it is like fabricated or a big like production, especially if we have like a camera crew around us, then that takes away the magic of like a simple family moment. And so we, we greatly try to like be very pick like picky and choosy about when we do anything that uh big production just because that's the only thing that makes our family feel less like intimate um yeah so we just do a few of those each year i'm such a big fan of you guys i don't know how else to say it. uh i i i i would love to when we come to hawaii have an extended version of this conversation because sure. i i really respect how you've navigated this well yourself but jess i've heard you describe Garrett as incredibly ambitious and you mentioning you didn't grow up with traveling or like this you know spontaneity spontaneity uh as normalcy how have you guys gotten on the same page with like hey he's ambitious I'm not or you know I'm not as ambitious he yeah. wants to travel all the time I would like to do you guys have goal setting meetings like touch base meetings is there any routines that you that you have no, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like our whole marriage has been this constant, like Garrett reach for the stars and me like bring him back in. But it kind of works. Garrett's definitely, um, you know, steering the ship and I'm the motor behind it all. Um, so it's a lot of like give and take, you know, and um, I never thought I'd be living in a house in Hawaii. Not that I don't love my life, but it's just not what I had initially like pictured for myself. So it's been the, this kind of, you know, thing that we've had to work through as a, as a marriage of me ending up, you know, and sometimes he's like, well, I feel like you're not grateful. And I'm like, well, it's not that I'm not grateful. It's just that I'm genuinely happy where I stand. And, and that could have been, you know, some house in Colorado, just on a normal street, or it could have been on a beach house in Hawaii, you know? So it's just kind of been us understanding our personalities a little bit more and him being more forgiving and being like, oh, not everybody wants to take over the world like I do. <laughs> Uh, some people have to like help me do that. And and so it's just been kind of, I feel like these last two years, year and a half, we've really come to like a way better understanding of each other's personalities and 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 how to be supportive. And, and him also encouraging me more to like, what do you want to do? And what, you know, what what are your goals? You know, so, so we've had a lot more of those conversations over the last little bit, because for a while it, it was tough, you know? When we first settled down in Hawaii, I was so thrilled. I was so thrilled to have a home and start having a community. And, and then we would get an email from the Korean tourism board being like, come to T Korea and we'll pay you. And Garrett's like, yes. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. But like, you know, the kids have school and Garrett's like, but well, we can get paid to go to Korea as a family, you know? So it's been such like mm. a push and pull for years. And we're still kind of like working through it. But I mean, it's our spring break right now. And for the first time ever 
in the last, you know, seven years, Garrett was the one who was like, you need to be home. And I was like, yes. Today's show is brought to you by Modern Fertility. In order to get anything done around here, we really try to plan ahead. Let's be honest. Usually it's it's you trying to plan ahead, Sean, <laughs> but I agree. That's one of the reasons I love Modern Fertility, because it helps you plan for the future. It's an easy and affordable way to test your fertility hormones at home with a single finger prick. All you do is mail it in with a prepaid label and you'll get your personalized results within 10 days. You'll get insight into your hormone levels, your ovarian reserve, aka like how many eggs you have compared to other women your age, and other important fertility factors. The results go deep into what every hormone means, and you can also download the results to review with your doctor for next steps. If you're thinking about having kids in the future, having this info can be really helpful. And traditional testing can cost over $600, but Modern Fertility gets you the same info at a fraction of the price. Right now, Modern Fertility is offering our listeners $30 off the test when you go to modernfertility.com slash eastfam30 this is a limited time offer for 30 dollars off that means your test will cost 169 dollars instead of the hundreds or thousands it could cost at a doctor's office get 30 dollars off your fertility test when you go to modernfertility.com slash eastfam30 modernfertility.com slash eastfam30 we'll also link that down below let's get back to it i feel like i'm literally staring in the mirror I know. Oh, that was, kind of, everything you just said is us. Dude, you, oh my god. Andrew? Yeah, yes. I typically well, okay. I guess it's almost like um I I, I want to use the term FOMO, but that doesn't really capture it. It's like this gratitude is kind of more what I feel of like, oh my gosh, like I cannot believe we have the opportunity to do this and like there's no way we're gonna miss it. Like I don't know. It's just in a general, I don't know what makes you tick or wake up in the morning, but for me, it's like, dude, oh my gosh, we're doing it. Like, how crazy is this? And but, I'll be the same one that's like, I don't know if that is worth it to like miss yeah. school and take the kids out of their routine or whatever it is. So we, it, we go through the same exact conversation. It's like two different styles of expressing and living with gratitude. Jessica expresses her gratitude by being okay with what she has. Whereas for me, that would feel like complacent. And my way of expressing yeah. my gratitude is making the absolute very most of it because I was like blessed and given these opportunities. So why not just go, go, go? And uh, yeah. yeah, so it's both ways of living with gratitude, just in very well. Different I think ways. so much of it is being a mom, right? Where you're like, yes. the kids like the kids don't want to miss the sleepovers and the holiday performances, you know. So I feel like I have to be such an advocate for the kids because, you know. I don't know. Our kids live a very weird, very weird life of like how yeah. much traveling they do. And, you know, and Dorothy, I'm like, you want to go to this birthday party or like you want to go to the, you know, on safari? Like, do you want to go to That's insane. You know, like it's, it's such a weird lifestyle that most people don't have to like deal with. But, um, you know, we've had to like, we've had to give and take and it, it it's worked out, but. You know, I'm sure you guys have had similar arguments in your home. Do you find that your kids have the travel bug? Like giving them that opportunity to say, do you want to go on a safari or go on a sleepover? Do they sometimes like pull that way of I want to go on a safari? Yeah, they just don't even realize like to them, the world. Am I saying this right? The world is such a small place to them because everything is so accessible. Yeah. So they'll be like oh, I want to go skiing. Should we go to Switzerland or should we go to Colorado or should we go their first? I'm pretty sure their first skiing ever was in Dubai. Qatar in Dubai. Dubai. Um, so, wow. Uh, wow. yeah, it's just their, their like perception of everything. is just super <laughs> wacky. <Skewed. laughs> yeah. yeah. Manila for Christmas, my son, middle son for Christmas, he's like, I want to go to the Maldives. And I'm like, oh. Santa's not bringing me <laughs> to the Maldives. Oh my God! No, little uh, Jessica literally said, "I don't think that's possible." So then he comes to me and goes, "Dad, if you think Santa will bring me a trip to the Maldives, then I'll just take you." Like, mom's out. Oh my gosh! She doesn't have oh this magic. She out. You're in, Dad. <laughs> but that's hilarious. like when I told the kids, I was like, "Do you guys want to go? We were supposed to go to the Middle East this um, spring break, and it it wasn't really working out for a whole bunch of reasons." But um, I had asked my kids. Um, do you want to go to Israel or do you want to stay home? And every single one of my kids in different situations was like, I just want to be home. 
So oh, I mean, wow. it, it, it was interesting to us for them to be like, I want to be here. I want to see friends. I just, I'm tired. I want to relax. So like, you know, also now I feel like we're trying harder and harder to take our kids' opinions into what we do and where we go. What are your kids' ages right now? We've got 10, 8, and 5. Oh. Hey. When was the first year that you started noticing their preferences of like, oh, I'm tired of this or I'm itching to travel again or that they actually like saw the difference of being home versus on the road? I mean... Honestly, we're just kind of there now. Like we're yeah. just starting yeah. to learn. Uh, what was the situation? So our oldest is our daughter, Dorothy, and she's maybe my favorite human on this planet. <laughs> and uh, she had the chance. What was Oh, okay. Speaking of spring break, she could either go with her friend on a ski trip or stay at home and surf with me. And I was like, well, that's an easy choice for her. For sure, she's going to choose to spend spring break with her dad surfing. And she comes to me and asks if she can go on the ski trip. She wanted to go on the ski trip with her friend. Uh, I've been dealing with that still. I'm not quite over oh. it. <laughs> I tried to ground her, lock her in a tower, whatever it took. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. not going to emotionally right now because of it. But yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we're, we're currently dealing with it. I will say, though, do I think Dorothy's ready to rage. Like, she's always kind of ready to go and do stuff. Manila, or to like, sorry, I mean, to stay at home. Like, she cares so much about the friends and the community. And maybe it's because she's a little bit older. But Manila, when we left our second, he was one. Like, he loves life on the road. And he actually, mm. frankly, he thrives there. His personality is at its best on the road. But then in an interesting way, when we get home, he struggles. Like, he can't sleep. Even in our home, he won't sleep in the same bed tw two nights in a row. He'll sleep in his bed one night and then on the couch and then in a different bedroom. Like, that to him is comfortable. Two nights in the same bed is like weird and uncomfortable for him. It's it's a very I mean, interesting thing. How long have you guys been married? Fourteen years. April. I think April will be fourteen years. Wow. We uh, the the longer we're we're coming up on seven. The longer we're in this thing, the more. Well, <laughs> we reach a point where like you're like you're like button heads, and then I think just recently I've really appreciated the fact that oh my gosh, as much as Sean and I have to work through being different, like thank goodness that she balances me out because otherwise like we would be so out of whack. Everything would probably, so like it's, it's really a beautiful team. It really once is. You grow to, I yeah. am positive Garrett would be dead in the gutter without me. <laughs> how long if, if, I, if Andrew and I went on a trip together, how long would we last? Oh, that'd be a scary if trip. If we come home alive, we win. <laughs> I, I mean, it's interesting. Yeah. I mean, again, we can chat more about this some other time, but like hearing about, like, I feel like we have share in common um, just working with your spouse. It's a, it's a difficult thing. Um, not yeah. only, you know, all the travels, mm -hmm. but then on top of that, you know, just how someone works. And that's been so interesting for us over the last few years. And I feel like you've done a way better job, but at first it was like, you're nonstop. Garrett is nonstop. And for me, I'm like, can we please just like turn off and watch a show or go on a walk or something? And that just was so hard for him. And it was so hard for him, I think, to see me like not helping out and not pulling my own weight. Like, anyway, it's just working with your spouse wow. is really tough. But awesome. I feel this in my but, soul. Yeah. <laughs> This is how we operate. I feel like if it weren't, like if I weren't in the the picture, Andrew, we'd be living like on a um, school bus, just like <laughs> on a constant road trip for the rest of our lives with the children. And probably working 14 hours a day. Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah. <laughs> well, I, that is the, I've gotten experience unbelievable things that I never imagined. And just, uh, you mentioned that earlier, like you, this was not the life you thought you'd end up living. Same with, you know, Sean and I, I, I stumbled in to dating her and then we got married and it's like, wow, I was supposed, I was going to be building wells in Africa. Mm -hmm. Like that's why I studied civil engineering. I was trying to like do that. And then now we're doing <laughs> YouTube and, but You're welcome. 
whether like whether it's career or traveling and like we've been places I never thought we'd get to go, but it is it is kind of cool um, to think you can find contentment in whatever situation you're doing, whatever career, whether you're in Maldives or in Hawaii and Nashville, like there is a, that's kind of my main takeaway after experiencing things that I never even knew that I wanted. And then like coming back and now having kids and we've, we've not traveled as much. It's like, Hey, I actually can be just as content in the playroom as I can be in the Maldives. And anyway, that's more of a tangent, but have you guys, have you guys experienced that yourself? you yeah we're the same person me (laughs) (laughs) answer all my questions for me because he knows my personality (laughs) type i think for us i think i think covid was a huge blessing for garrett to have to stay stay put and we finally made a community here in hawaii and now he's got this like cute group of little boyfriends that go out and surf every morning so so now he's got this life at home not cute babe we're tough (laughs) That he loves. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, something he would say verbatim. Oh I love this conversation right now. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I, it's it was such a blessing, I think, for me. Now that Garrett is like, okay, like I, it's it's a hard toss up. Do I want to be here, like surfing and hanging and working out with my friends and community and playing soccer, or? do I want to travel? And both are great options and we're happy in both places. And frankly, when we leave for the summer, we leave the day after school ends and we get back the day before school starts. I kind of feel like we live this Hannah Montana two lives. I, I completely forget about That's home. That's a great example. I completely forget about home. I, I have to, or I get really homesick. Um, and yeah. for us, those three months of full-time travel is 10 times easier than our spring break trips or our weekend stops you know and i pack the exact same that i do for three months of travel that i do for two weeks on the road you know two week spring breaks or something like that so um we really enjoy our summers it's a very special place for us when we can really get into like this groove on the road and i mean i i think every family should take take a summer or take a month or something and really feel what it's like to like live just with your family unit it's really special that's one thing we would get messages. We do get emails all the time of people wanting to become like full-time traveling families. And we usually try to discourage them just being like, look, it, there's a lot of risk to it. It's really hard, especially if you're wanting to do social media. You guys know how much like you can do all the right things on social media and still just like not pop off or get lucky. And so we usually discourage people away from full-time travel. But Anytime some somebody wants to do like an extended trip, like a gap year or something, or go live abroad just for a short period of time, I, we think that's one of the best decisions, uh, especially young families can make. Um, so we always encourage that. When you're looking and you're planning like your summers now, I, I know when we ran into you guys four years ago, you were explaining how, you know, the year before you would start planning your entire year of travel and the research you would put into it. Now that you're a family of five with kids, what's your criteria when you're looking for like the next place and what's like your checkoff list or do you have one? You know, now it's kind of interesting. And I think it was about a year ago that Garrett and I were kind of like, how long is this going to go on? Like, how long is this social media thing going to go? Like, I, I don't know, you know, like we, we are grateful and understand the opportunity that we have. So we kind of sat down and we're like, what is actually on our bucket list? What are things that if Instagram died tomorrow and we wouldn't get paid to travel anymore, we couldn't travel, you know, for being hosted, uh, what are those things we want to do? We made that list. Well, because uh, Jessica and I, we both grew up in such like frugal families that a lot of the experiences that we've, we've been blessed to have, we would never, ever shell out like even if we can afford some of these places we've stayed we just wouldn't have it within our frugal spirits to like shell out 20k a night for an experience but then if we get that special invite then obviously we want to go and experience and document and promote it and so that's what this list was was okay what are places that we would only go if we were invited and we would never even as like billionaires like find it within ourselves to be able to shell out for 
And so a lot of our upcoming travels are exactly that, like that part of our list. Uh, some of it, like going to Antarctica or the Arctic is a really good example. It's a very long journey, a very expensive journey, especially if you're going to do it with children. And so that's one where we have to do it as the bucket list family while we can, because we, you know, that's the kind of the only way for us to do it. What does that look like with kids? Like, aren't you, don't you go from the tip of South America yes, and cruise like down? Yes, you either, I mean, usually into like Chile or to Argentina, and then you jump on a boat there, and then they kind of take you around like Cape Horn. It's usually like at least like a 16-day passage um, there and back. And then uh-huh. crazy waters. Yeah. And a lot of the, m- the majority of the boats won't allow, some of them are like you need to be at least 16. We found a few that like you need to be at least like 11 years old, and then we found one that was... I'm going to take a five-year-old. <laughs> so, but you know that'll be interesting, and the kids are used to, you know, being in situations where there's most likely not any other children around. Um, you know, and we have mm-hmm. games and activities, and we, you know, we make it fun for the whole family. Wow. Have you read the book Endurance, Garrett? My two hobbies are ping pong and and reading. Oh shit! Oh, that's, that's there where, it is. That's where you guys are not similar. Garrett's read two books in his lifetime, so. <laughs> <laughs> I will challenge There's- you to ping pong though. <laughs> Guys, did you Pretty know, good. did you know, fun fact, Jessica wrote a book. It's going to be my third book I ever read will be Jessica's book. Is it out right now? No, it comes out next year. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. All right, we're doing another interview next year. Put it on your calendars. Yep, next year. We're, I'm writing a book. It's like a big like coffee table, 300 page, everything you need to know about family travel uh, with National Geographic. So super. Oh um, my gosh. Yes. Can I get an advanced copy? I'm so proud of you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So she started That's... this book three years ago. Uh, yeah. She started it three years ago, and she she made it known from like the get go. She wanted this to be her project. Garrett, just stay out of it. And so I did, until they showed us like the rough draft of it because they had taken everything she had written and kind of formatted it into the design and everything of this National Geographic book. When I saw it, this like cheer mom stage mom just overcame me and now it's all i talk about and think about is i'm just so freaking proud of this book it's which i was so excited i really enjoy writing and i i was so excited about the opportunity and i really enjoyed the whole process but now that like now that it's kind of about me i'm like shoot what have i done like because with social media and everything like i always hide behind my kids and garrett and i've been able to just kind of be this like just you know one of five and now that this thing is about me i feel really uncomfortable and uh you know promote like i'm not a self-promoting person so now i'm like a little nervous for this really book release next year that's what you have us for. We'll promote right. for you. Yeah. Guys. I'm going to promote her so hard. She's going to be on like the Today Show and I'll be right behind the camera being like, you're doing great, baby. <laughs> Let's go. That's awesome. Okay. So because you're the bucket list family, what we're like, ugh, it's such a cliche question. I'm sure you've been asked this a million times. What are your like three favorite places you've ever been? Mm. And outside of Antarctica, where it's another place that you have yet to check off. My favorite places, I would say, are New Zealand, Rwanda, and Turkey are probably my top three. Wow. Quality. What were yours? Quality. Uh, I'll, I'll give you guys just my very favorite spot on the entire planet. Uh, it's off of the country of Tanzania in Zanzibar, but a very specific kind of heart-shaped island, very small, called Mimba. And... Uh, the whole, the entire island has these 12 little huts on it. And it's the only way to be on the island. Like you can't set foot on this island unless you're staying in one of these 12 little huts. And if you go to this island on an odd year, so like 2023 is an odd year. We're going there this summer. The last time we were there was two years ago, again on an odd year. And uh, if you go there on an odd year, then the beaches will be covered in these baby sea turtles that are hatching and making their way to the ocean. And it's not you and hundreds of other, uh, other people and it's roped off and all that. It's just you and nature and maybe a few other people that are with you on this island. And they're they're making their way down the white sand into crystal clear waters here in Zanzibar. And in the water, there's bottlenose dolphins and humpback whales and whale sharks it's just nature at its finest with very few humans. 
Oh my god! I want to go there. Remember. <laughs> I want to go there. And then next on our bucket list, um, I'm trying to think what's next on my bucket list. I, I want to swim in the wild with killer whales. Um, one of the best places to do that is in Norway, where it's very, very cold and very pricey to go that far. And so I've been researching and trying to find other places to do it in perhaps warmer weather. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. That Either way, that'll happen. Wow. Dang. Um, and then I'm ready. Um, uh, you'll kind of notice we love wildlife. So a lot of our travels around wildlife. And I would love to see some panda bears. So maybe China. <gasps> That would be incredible. Yeah. You want to cuddle a panda bear? I want to cuddle a panda bear. <laughs> okay. Do you guys ever stop and think about how beautiful this yeah. this place we live is? Oh my gosh. That's insane. We we had a little family church at home yesterday, and that's what we talked about. Just this beautiful earth we've been given, and especially when you go on, we're going to safari. We're doing safari pretty much all summer this year, and uh, when you see the the circle of life at its like finest, it's it man, I'm just so humbled, and I get like teary just thinking about how beautiful this earth is. This uh, this little like home spiritual lesson yesterday on Sunday, Jessica asked each of the kids like, "Close your eyes. I want you to picture that you're somewhere, anywhere on the planet. It's a beautiful moment. Now, like, open your eyes and explain this moment." And our middle child, Manila, was like, "I'm in the Maldives, sitting on the beach, eating a crepe." And I was like, "Who is this child?" <laughs> but it was really sweet because Callie was like I'm sitting I'm in Tahiti and I'm in the ocean and I'm snorkeling and it was really cool and to he was hear explaining that. the different manta rays and yeah. animals he was seeing this show is brought to you by BetterHelp BetterHelp is a trusted brand that's been in our life for several years now if you've been listening to our podcast, you know that we're big fans of using therapy to strengthen ourselves and by extension, our relationship. Even if you aren't working through a big conflict right now, therapy can be helpful as a preventative measure just to make sure your relationship is continuing to get stronger. It's so nice to have an outlet to talk to a professional and we can't tell you enough how helpful therapy has been for us personally and as a couple. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, we highly recommend trying BetterHelp. It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can also switch therapists at any time for no additional charge to make sure it's the right fit for you. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can help get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash eastfam today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash eastfam. We'll also link it down below, and let's get back to it. You, you mentioned traveling to learn lessons from cultures around the world. I didn't preface this question. So to the best that you can, what would be three lessons that you feel like you've gleaned from your travels? One I, one I think about um, was like very like right off the bat, right? We were traveling in Tonga and Honestly, it was like our first like real stop. And we were there, we were seeing the humpback whales. It was just an incredible experience. But every morning the boat leaves pretty early and there was one gym, one gym on there. You know, we like to work out. So we wake up early, go to this gym and find out that it, it, um, it's locked. It, it's locked and it, it, it just doesn't open on time. And it's a dollar a day. It's like the most janky, like, I don't know, like wooden like what was it it was like you were like pushing wheelbarrows yeah, and like, had like train so wheels ghetto. and just heavy chains it was but cool it, it was the only gym on the island and we went to the guy and we were like hey if you can open up later on in the day after we get back from the whales uh we'll pay you 20 bucks a day because the hours of this gym were from 9 a.m till till noon. yeah the the hours sucked and uh, anyway it was a dollar a day and the guy was like no i was like dude i'll give you 20 dollars a day <laughs> That's like got to be your year salary. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Such like a, and he, it was like a no brainer to him. And I think right off the bat, we had that American mentality of like, don't you want to make money? And don't you want more? Yeah. Like, this is so easy. You can, you can have all this if you do, you know, like that was such like a, yeah, an American, like more, more, more type of mentality that we brought into it and realizing that this Tongan man was like, I want to go home and be with my family after 12 PM. So no, mm, mm. and I was like, "Wow, touche, man!" Like, that, lesson learned. That was a good lesson to learn that not everybody thinks the way we think. Mm. You got one? That's awesome. 
Uh, I always just remember when we traveled to Turkey our first time and like, I hate to even say it this way, but if you were to like go and ask uh, a young American to like draw a picture of like what they think of when they think of like terrorists, when we landed in Turkey, like that's the type of people that we were surrounded by. And both of our moms on the flight to Turkey called us being like, we don't feel good about you being over there. We're really nervous. It was during like the coup over there. And uh, uh, there was just a lot of like bad stuff being said in the American news about Turkey. But fortunately, by this time, we had traveled to enough places that we realized most of the stereotypes you have going into a place are very wrong. And once you get to know the people mm -hmm. there, um, they're just kind, wonderful people. So uh, we decided to do the same when we landed in Turkey. Let's give it at least 24 hours, feel it out, even though both of our moms back home are freaking out. And sure enough, Turkey, if we were to like make a list of just the sweetest, kindest people that we've crossed yeah. uh, around the entire world, Turkey would be at the very top of that list. Just the sweetest, most kind people, which just, you know, was a lesson for us forever not to judge any people by their reputation, not to judge any book by its cover. And um, it also just put a Turkey in a very sp special place in our hearts, be knowing that they do have kind of this negative reputation, that entire part of the world, <clears throat> and they just live with it, you know, and, and they have to rise above it and be very forgiving to people who come with that stereotype and just wow. be kind and welcoming and, and tell people can learn better. Dang. Wow. <laughs> Those are two phenomenal lessons. Yeah. My gosh. Yeah. That's what I was um, saying, though. As we started to, like, see that the influence that these travels were, were having on us and our kids, us together as a family, uh, that, as parents, became very addicting, and we just wanted more and more of that for our family. Have you ever had, like, negative... Like, hey, they stole our bags or my my grandpa went to Egypt and asked the guy to take a picture of him on a camel. <laughs> and he took a picture and <laughs> stole the camera and, you know, wanted however much money for it. Oh, wow. Anyway, any well, does that happen think, often? I think back to that same Tonga trip and we got on the plane and we arrived to Tonga and they were like, oh, the plane was too heavy. So we took off clearly tourist luggage. <laughs> so I was like, you know, didn't have a bag for like three or four days or something like that. You know, like stuff like that. It just it just happens. And and unfortunately, America now has a really bad reputation. And some sometimes I'll admit, I'll tell people I'm from Canada. Everybody likes Canadians. So people will be like, where are you from? And I'm like, Canada. And they're like, fuck Canada. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so we, we've had to learn how and, and actually we, we love hearing how we're perceived. Americans are perceived, you know, and trying to hopefully be a good example of what, you know, Americans are all about and how, how, how you know, the American dream and what we believe it, it means to us. So we've tried to be good examples and stewards mm -hmm. of, of the American people. It is pretty cool. Obviously, Internet is complicated and there's pros and cons to it but like um the fact that we can see similarities mm -hmm. and connect through similarities through facebook groups or you know whatever it is with someone in turkey and africa and all over the place it's like it's pretty powerful to the i just think when i think of an italian person i don't like necessarily have stereotypes that are pre-populated it's like oh i don't know there's probably people over there that are interested in pasta as well as american football as well as you know what it's just a guy who's has different interests like me you know anyway but <laughs> did, you, <laughs> did, you, did you like that okay i want to hear about bucket list studios Oh man. All right. So Bugula Studios is our attempt in a way to like transition our family from a life of very heavily social media into something that might hopefully become more like long term and sustainable and not live and die based on social media. And a lot of that is just and live and die on us and the kids. You know, a lot of it was like, do I want my kids in the spotlight? 
you yeah. know, how, and I, I'm sure you guys have had similar questions, like how is this going to affect my children? There's just too many examples in Hollywood of like what happens to a young person when they have too much fame, too much success too early. And so just with all of those things considered, we came up with the idea to take our, but at the same time, we didn't want to take the bucket list family that we've worked so hard to build as like a positive brand and message and just turn it off. And so the question was, how do we take that positive message that we want to share with the entire world and have it live beyond us? And the idea was to create a cartoon. And so currently we have hired a team of 10 and we also did a really cool thing where we invited our uh bucket list community and audience around the world to chip in and be investors like real like put in money for actual ownership. we are proud of that party <laughs> we're members um yeah and it, awesome. it, it was such an incredible thing we had 10 million dollars total from thirty thousand different investors around the world like you said yourselves included and it's uh 50 different countries are represented within that investor pool uh, around the world. It was That's just awesome. such, such a cool thing, right? Um, and so now, now that puts the pressure and responsibility heavily on myself um, to create this into something truly special. I'm completely new to the world of entertainment and cartoon creation. Uh, our team is now 10 that we've hired. And I'll tell you this, uh, there, I, I've learned that there's a quick way that I could have done it. I could have outsourced to the right people and the cartoon could have been completed like a year ago but it would be very surface level quality and just not very timeless and if uh if i had a commitment to one thing to our investors and people who believe in us it would be that i'm going to do my very best to take the heart and soul that people have connected with the bucket list brand and slow cook and bake that into this cartoon that'll be much more than just like a childish cartoon what we don't want is somebody to just like put an ipad in front of their child and say zone out and just kind of binge on this netflix instead we want this to be like full family entertainment where people very mindfully like gather together with family and friends and watch this show that is uh life-changing messages, timeless, beautiful art, and really powerful music, all packed into one. In order for me, especially as a rookie in this industry, to do that, it's just been a long, slow process. So there's a lot of people. I'll get messages every day of people being like, hey, I gave you my money, and now like I, I see nothing of it. It's already been three years. And if they only knew that I'm just cranking away behind the scenes like tirelessly. Um, but I just, I just have to like know what I'm working on, stay patient while uh, cranking away. Uh, I'll, I'll say this, it's going really well and it's going to be incredible. I'm going to make sure of it, but I honestly don't know if it'll come out in two years, three years, 10 years. Like I'm just going to keep working on it until it's perfect. That's one thing that we learned from our travels that the world has greatly changed is you can go say into the mountains in Switzerland and you can see these towns that were so carefully designed and slowly built one stone at a time and because of that effort up front they get more beautiful with time as opposed to i mean i grew up in utah and the place where i grew up in the mountains when i grew up there was like no homes it was just us and our farmhouse and now you go there and it's just hundreds and hundreds of homes but they were built all over the last like few years and I'm telling you, I, I don't want this to be the case, and I hope I'm wrong, but my prediction is because it was built so frivolously, it's going to fall just as fast. And that area of Utah won't be very valuable years down the road because of how quickly it was built. So what I'm trying to say is with this cartoon, I'm trying to have that like Swiss builder's mindset and build it brick by brick so that it can last forever. Mm. Well... I'm willing to wait because <laughs> I have full faith and confidence in you, Garrett. So very excited it. to see how that turns out. Take your time with it, man. Don't rush a good thing. And also in regards to, uh, well, one with the Dorothy issue of her choosing the ski trip. Oh, it is, it is, this is the, uh, 
I guess the great conundrum of parenting mm -hmm. where the goal is to raise a responsible, independent person. Mm -hmm. But that hurts so bad when all you want them to do is just be completely like it's endearing when my kid needs me. Right. right. But dang. Yo, have you seen there's a movie? It's a popular movie, but I saw it for my first time on a flight the other day. Have oh. you seen the movie Father of the Bride? Ooh, it's been a while. Dude, it's been a while. Now that you have a daughter, watch it and we can just cry together. It is. <laughs> it's you. So bad. Dude. Garrett literally installed a basketball hoop in our <laughs> driveway, like right after he saw that movie. <laughs> uh, it, I was taking Drew to school today and she was just like, I glanced back at her and she shot me the sweetest yeah. smile and I smiled back and I said, what you thinking about girl? And she said, oh, I'm just thinking about God. <laughs> and I was like, wow, really? She's like, yeah, I'm just talking to him. Aww. And I was like, Oh my gosh, the, you are my favorite person on planet Earth. You know? Oh, yeah. that's but, so sweet. Wait, so uh, how old is she? little minds. How old is she? She's only three. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't think anyone's ever said that to her either, which was beautiful. But it's but really special. To close the loop on the kids in the spotlight, like, I would much rather have parents like you influencing culture mm -hmm. and having family like sharing your family experience and all these horrible stories right like we've had conversations at length still having conversations on a weekly basis about like how to navigate this but like i think of the spider-man quote with great power comes great responsibility so it's like you know uh don't that, that's more of an onus on us to step up to the plate and raise responsible uh you know ethical god-fearing children i think and have that be the priority and for us to make our choices on a daily basis to be in line with that so hopefully they can glean from experience as well as like explicit lessons but anyway well and i think that's where both of our families really <clears throat> i think have done an incredible job when it comes to social media like i always say i think you can put out good bad or nothing um and mm -hmm. probably the normal person me would put out nothing but after, like you said, to whom much is given, much is required, you know, uh, you, it's better to put out good, you know? So to have two yeah. families, one in Tennessee and one in Hawaii, just putting out family and marriage yeah. and love and kindness and, you know, adventure and service, all the things, you know, like, it's just, I, I feel like we're doing what we're meant to do right now. I think you guys just use the same quote. You use the Spider-Man version, you use the Bible version. <laughs> The, thank you. I don't know why I said Spider-Man for it's sure. Like, <laughs> it's the same quote. She just used the Bible version. You use the Spider-Man version. <laughs> I connected with your version. <laughs> with, yeah, Spider-Man. Yeah. Uncle, no, he's spot uh, on. He, he, word for word. He got it right. The Spider-Man version. <laughs> oh, gosh. Thanks, G. Well, truly. We love you guys. We're so impressed. We just want to learn from you guys and hopefully make it to Hawaii to see you guys in person. Well, likewise. Yeah. We're just nothing but supportive and admiration for everything you guys are putting out there. So if you ever need anything from us, you let us know for sure. Yeah. No matter where I do have one question. Out soon. Oh, one more question. Yeah. Hit us. Well, just one question off the top of your head. If we were to like, if you say it, if we were to go this summer somewhere and take our babies, Maldives, Manila, let them answer. Okay. My bad. My bad. I know. Anywhere in the world, we'll do it. How old's your little boy? Three and one. Oof. He'll be two in July. I may answer, but you got to go first. No, you go. I don't know. I got to think. All right. I'm going to suggest that you guys go to Belize because it's outside the country. You're getting a new culture, except everyone there speaks English. They accept the dollar. The drinking water is clean. It's very kid friendly. And then you're going to have like crystal clear water with cool wildlife, a bunch of sharks and turtles and, wow. and everything. So you're getting like so much of the goodness that, but you don't need to go like around the world to the Maldives or Bali for it. Okay. But if you it's do, direct my, uh, my vote's going to be, if you are ready to take a bigger step, Belize is a great one. If you want to stay like, I mean, it's probably like a three or four hour flight for you guys. And the time zone's probably pretty close probably to you guys. Same. If you do want to like go big, I would say Fiji. I think Fiji is hands down the most family friendly place you'll go. Almost every place you'll go, they literally have a nanny 
per child. So they'll like come to the dinner table and be like, oh, I'll take him and you can take her. And uh, no, literally just, as soon as breakfast, they come love take your, your children. children and they love your children so much. You can just see the way they hold uh -huh. them. They will love them. And then, you know, you can do as much with your kids or without your kids. Um, water's beautiful. Ocean's beautiful. And the people are just lovely. That was a good one. Yeah. I changed you my guys are such pros. <laughs> you guys are such pros. Okay, we're doing both. Okay, I do both. Doing both. <laughs> Andrew, have you well, tried surfing before? I know how to surf. Uh, it not well. Sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got up on a wakeboard my first time trying. I got up on like a wake surf. All the I'm like pr like skiing even my first try. Water skiing, surfing took me so long. Yeah. Dude, I'm telling you, I grew up doing all those board sports my entire life. Surfing is. I think that's why I'm addicted to it currently. It's the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. I love it though. Nothing like a nice morning in the water. Mm -hmm. I want to just sit here for the next 10 hours, but we'll, <laughs> we'll let you guys go. And yeah. we have a lot to talk soon. about and catch up on. So thanks for the time. <laughs>